Karen blames me for her son's failing grades, but years later, she begs me to tutor her son. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell for notifications. Some context first. I live in a seaside resort where the majority of the population is white, conservative, and quite well off. This story takes place while I was still in primary school, so I think I was around 8 or 9 years old, not exactly sure. The primary school I went to, basically everyone knew each other, and most of the parents were friends leading to the creation of a sort of community. My parents and I were labeled as outcasts, and while they tried to be friendly with us, we weren't invited to parties, barbecues, or even birthdays. Now, what did we do to deserve such treatment? Well, uh, exist, I I guess. They never gave us any real reason, but I think it was a mix of me being black, my mother not quite fitting into the lovely soccer mom archetype, and my dad's past. He's from that town and used to hang out with metalheads when he was younger before basically disappearing for several years to travel around the world. Anyway, at that time I had average to good grades, but was often reprimanded by teachers because I was talking with my classmates during our lessons, especially with my best friend at the time, that we'll call F for the rest of the story. The other parents did not like us very much, but F's mother, the entitled mother of the story, took it to a whole other level. She absolutely hated our guts. I think it started when my mother became really good friends with her ex-husband. It was to the point that I was banned from going to her house, even for F's birthday. F and I bonded a lot because of our mutual love of video games, but while F wasn't allowed to play during the week, only on Wednesdays and during the weekend, and was limited to one or two hours. My parents didn't care a lot about me playing during the week as long as I did my homework and had good grades. This infuriated Entitled Mother, because F often came to my house when he was with his father to play games. So when F's grades started to drop a little, she went off on my parents, calling my mother on her cell phone. Yes, are you original posters, mother? Uh, yeah, what can I do for you? Look, my son's grades have dropped significantly, and I think your son is to blame. He's disturbing the balance of our family and causing us to have to punish our son. Your son's a bad influence on my son and on the other pupils as well. He's not playing outside or doing sports like other kids. Instead, he just keeps playing his stupid video games or reading fantasy novels. I'd like for you to punish your son. Take his DS and tell him to stop contacting my son. I understand your concern and I'll discuss the issue with my husband. My mother was ticked, because it wasn't the first time we had to deal with that woman. See the aforementioned you're not allowed to enter my house or go to my son's birthday party. And Entitled Mother even went to the teachers to ask them to put us in different classes. If I was already being treated like trash before, it got even worse. And that's around the time that other pupils started playing a game where they basically ignored me. Saying crap like, oh I think I heard a voice in the wind when I was talking. I also got bullied for being black but that's a different story. Now, if you want a satisfying ending, while the shunning continued throughout the rest of primary school and a part of middle school, eventually F and I parted ways because we weren't enjoying the same things anymore. And he became kind of a jerk. Entitled Mother's Perfect Boy had really bad grades, was berated by the teachers in our high school because he never worked during or outside of classes, and was only disturbing everyone else. He also got into parties and substances and was rejected by every school and university he applied to, so he was forced to enter an expensive private school. I live in Europe, and here, private schools aren't usually the best, especially in the field he and I are in, and public schools are way better, and also free. In high school, I was one of the best students in my grade. I was in the same class as F, and because his mother assisted with the reunion where the teachers decided to give an award to the best students each trimester, she had to watch the teacher praise me while she got the stink eye for F's behavior. One day, she even called me to ask if I could give her son lessons because he was failing so bad this trimester. I feel kind of bad for F, but his mother is a monster of entitlement. I should also add that due to an incident that occurred just a few weeks ago, she's now getting shunned by all the other parents from that group. Some jerks do get what's coming to them. Yikes, there's a lot to unpack with this one. Let's start out with the entitled mother who has the wrong idea about her perfect son. 
Guess what? No one's kid is perfect. I know a lot of parents like to think that theirs is, but they're not. They're probably also not that special. Every once in a while, they're gonna need help. They're not gonna be great at everything. It's okay to acknowledge that and not necessarily blame it on other outside factors. In this case, though, your issue with the original poster and their family goes beyond just spending time there. Too bad you can only see skin deep, because there was a lot more to offer there if you were just willing to get past that. Your son had a good friend, and you ruined that. And this person could have also been a positive influence on them, and helped them through school and topics that they struggled with. But no, of course it's not a problem with your kid. It has to be them. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below. And don't forget to subscribe. I decided to take legal action against the person who hit me with their car 11 years ago. When I, 28 year old male, was 17 and still in high school, I got hit by a car. The car sped through a red light and ended up hitting me while I was crossing the street. The accident left me in the hospital for three weeks. I could have died because of the driver. I received a spinal fracture from the situation, and I lost a good chunk of my mobility. I had a baseball scholarship lined up for Kansas State University, and I had that ripped away from me. My mother is a single parent. She had me when she was still in high school and had to drop out because of me. She couldn't hold down a job apart from part-time, non-intensive work, like a waitress. We couldn't afford my medical bills, so my mother had to sell a majority of our possessions just to cover a bit of it. She started taking more and more shifts at work just to pay off my bills. Eventually, we had to turn to banks for loans just to pay them off. My mother's credit has been in ruin. Last week was my 28th birthday, and a friend, we'll call him Jack, from high school, invited me over to his house, just to have a few beers and to watch a movie. Jack introduced me to his girlfriend Ashley, 29-year-old female. She was very pleasant to talk to. She had some wacky stories to share, and some great life advice about addictive substances since she's a recovering addict. Then she told me about the time she ran over a high schooler. Her car fit the exact description of the car that ran me over. The details of the story fit the exact version of my story. I asked her what happened to the high schooler she ran over, and she said, I have no clue really. The kid is probably 10 feet in the ground right now. She didn't have a single bit of remorse in her voice. She seemed to be stifling back laughter. I got up and left Jack's house. Two hours later, Jack phones me and asks why I left. I told him, Jack, your girlfriend ran me over. She completely ruined my life. Jack just laughed and said, so it's been 11 years, let it go. I yelled at Jack and told him I could be happy right now. I could be enjoying life, not sitting here broke and depressed, thinking about the what ifs every night. I told him that I'll be finding a lawyer and taking Ashley to court for damages. Now for the past week, I've been getting messages from my high school friends, Jack, his family, and Ashley, that I'm a jerk for not just letting it go. My mother says I should go through with the lawsuit against Ashley, but I don't know if I want to do it. It would have been much easier to just let it go and to continue on with my life. So, am I the jerk? Uh, no. This girl ran someone over, possibly killed them, and she's gonna sit there and laugh about it and talk about it casually to a person she just met? No, this girl is a problem. And I'm sorry if your friend's gonna be ticked off about it, but you know what? He's a jerk too. This isn't something you let go. This had a massive impact on your life and will continue to have an impact on your life. All because of this girl's negligence and general attitude. She absolutely needs to be taught a lesson about how much she's hurt your family and how much she's cost you guys. Maybe then she'll finally be sorry for what she did, even if it is for the wrong reasons. Previous boss walked into the office where I was team lead over three engineers. I was out at the time but heard this from the victim. Boss was angry about a mistake one of my guys made on an architectural plot. Not a mistake so much as a failure to use telepathy. Boss got so angry that while standing behind the seated engineer, he punched the guy in the side of the head. As if immediately realizing what he did wrong, he said, fix it, then left for the day. I got back to the office soon after and they told me what happened. 
We made a pact that if he ever put his hands on one of us, we'd all stand up and put him down hard and back each other up. Well, it never came to that. After approaching upper management and HR, I got the runaround on reporting the incident. They all basically said, if it was that bad, then report it to the police. But he's too high in the political structure to fire for this. Unhappy with that answer and with my guy unwilling to involve the police, a plan was set into motion. We invited his boss, the district manager to see the progress we'd made on a day when boss wasn't around. During this, I asked the DM to have skip level one-on-ones with my guys, saying that it would be good for morale. He agreed. Each one of my guys opened with, the biggest concern I have is that boss man punched Tony a couple months ago and HR told us they couldn't do anything about it. How can you ensure my safety? I got called in and gave my story, but had to say I wasn't there. I had tried to report it up through the proper channels and failed. I was told it was political suicide for my entire team if I was to push it. District manager didn't buy into the political bull. He made things happen. We agreed that my guys should not be in fear of physical attack. I also had district manager's backing in case of political fallout, and he was a personal friend of the CEO. So that was good enough protection. Boss man was let go. Don't hit my guys, jerk. Uh, yeah, that's assault. That can't be ignored. I don't care who this guy is in the company. It needs to be dealt with. Unless it's the CEO himself, it's HR's job to back you up. That's about the only guy I would think that they wouldn't want to mess with. And if that really is the case, then yeah, you guys go to the police or something. But living in fear of being punched as a result for poor work is not a situation that anyone should have to deal with. I still think a police report should have been filed, but hey, at least this is a start. I'm your teacher, not your friend. A bit about me first. I'm the type of guy who likes to let people make their mistakes and bask in their embarrassment when they realize. I'm also a chronic malicious complier, but that's irrelevant for this story. So I currently work in a school as a French teacher. Recently, I was on my way back into the school after retrieving my lunch from my car when I saw a student of mine walk down the road with a pair of his friends. The friends aren't my students and don't know me. The student sees me and waves to me. I wave back, and to my great amusement, his friend sees him waving, and raises his hand and shouts, hey bro. It was hella funny watching my student stumble over himself trying to get the guy to lower his hands, and explain that I'm a teacher and not one of his friends. So there you go. Not a very exciting story, but it was funny to me. <laughs> Okay, this is kind of a weird one, I guess. It's always a little awkward when you run into a teacher outside of school, but this guy's friend just made it a little more awkward. It's not his fault, though. How's he supposed to know? Nice to have a little one in the middle here with no jerks. Just a fun interaction. I told my brother-in-law, he's useless if he can't even babysit his own kids. I'm a 17-year-old female. My sister, 34, called me saying that her work had an emergency and she needs to get there ASAP and needed me to watch her kids because, quote, no one else can. I rushed over there just to find her husband locked in his game room playing video games. I asked her why she called me over if he was home and she said he didn't want to babysit because it was his only day off. Sister left and I started hanging with the kids. I was changing the baby's diaper and the other kids wanted a snack. I told them to go ask their dad to make them a snack. Since the baby had a blowout and it was going to take a while to clean him up, well, their dad sent them back upstairs and told them to ask me again. After cleaning the baby up, I made the kids a snack and their dad came out to eat and told me not to let the kids interrupt him on his day off. By the way, he works part-time from home six days a week. I kind of snapped at him and told him that it was my day off too and that he's a useless father and husband if his wife has to rely on her teenage sister rather than him. He started telling me I was disrespectful and didn't understand how hard parenting is. And I told him he clearly doesn't understand how hard it is either since he considers parenting his own children babysitting. He ended up kicking me out and apparently my sister was forced to come home because he told her she needed to figure it out since I'm her sister.
sister. I feel like I may be the jerk because my sister's mad at me, her husband's mad at me, my mom is mad at me for causing drama, but my dad thinks it's funny and agrees with me. I definitely didn't need to call him names, but I just hate this guy so much. We've argued about things in the past as well, so we already don't have a great relationship. My sister's saying I need to apologize to him, and he's threatening to never let me into the kids' lives if I keep disrespecting him. No, this guy just sounds like he doesn't want to step up to the plate. Maybe he just shouldn't have had kids if he didn't want the responsibilities that come along with them. I mean, by all means, if that's the lifestyle you want to live, go for it. But when you've got kids, other things come first. And you need to understand that, yeah, it might be your day off, but you still gotta look after them. They're your kids. It's not babysitting. It's a part of your day-to-day -day life. We all want that time to relax. And you know what? You are entitled to it, but it sounds like you're not really pulling your weight here. Time to get your act together, or your wife might decide that you are in fact useless, considering she seems to be doing everything already. Karen orders a plain omelette and then gets ticked off for me bringing her what she asked for. So my first job was a server at a very popular 24-hour breakfast diner chain. We had lots of colorful customers. One morning, I'm serving a woman sitting by herself. I ask her what I can get her, and she says she'd like an omelette. We have a list of pre-built omelettes, or you can build your own. So I ask how she'd like her omelette. Just a regular omelette, please, she tells me. Okay, so do you want one of the signature omelettes? What would you like inside of yours? <sighs> Nothing, just a regular omelette. I pause for a second because this order does occur, but not often. Some people like their eggs scrambled and cooked, then rolled up. So you'd like an omelette with nothing inside? Yes, a plain omelette. So I enter the order. A five egg omelette with no fillings and no toppings. A few minutes later it comes out, and she's appalled. What is this? Your plain omelette. But where's the cheese, or the ham, or the onions? She's irate. Ma'am, you ordered an omelet with nothing inside. She gets cocky and says, An omelet is eggs rolled up with ham, cheese, and onions. Everything else is extra. You should know this working at a breakfast place. I look at her deadpan and inform her, Actually, ma'am, omelet is French for scrambled eggs that are fried and rolled or folded. Everything else is extra. I'm busy, so I walk off and help other colorful customers. Meanwhile, she flags down a manager to complain, who confirms what I told her and points out that in the menu there is very specifically a ham, cheese, and onion omelet with a large picture in the middle of the page, then tells her she is to reorder her meal and wait a second time. The jerk didn't leave a tip. I mean, our original poster tried to confirm with you several times what it is you wanted, and you said yes every time. They even confirmed. You want nothing inside. You said yes. How much clearer do you want them to say it? That might be your standard omelet, but that doesn't mean it is the standard omelet. Plain means plain. Nothing. At all. Just the one ingredient. This one's just on you. I don't know what else you want me to say. Entitled parent feels sorry for me because I never had a daughter. I have four sons. They're 14, 12, 8, and 4. The older two are biological, and the younger two were adopted after a birth complication made us infertile. I was at the park over the weekend with my younger two boys. I got to chatting with another couple, and I mentioned that I had four boys. She said something like, Ugh, you poor thing. I wanted a girl too, but he, pointing at her husband, didn't want to have a third. I told her that, I didn't try for a girl, and that if I wanted a girl, we could have put that in our adoption paperwork, but we didn't have a gender preference. I had no strong desire for a girl, and love having sons, so she has no reason to feel sorry for me. It rubbed me the wrong way, that way she said, poor thing, like my boys aren't good enough for me, and she said it right in front of them. They already have to field questions about being adopted. They shouldn't have to feel bad about their gender too, you know? Anyway, the 
lady got upset, told me I was being rude for no reason, and walked away. I spoke to my sister-in-law about it, and she also felt I didn't handle it correctly. She is three girls and one boy, and said it's just a normal thing people comment on. She said people will tell her that her son is going to be feminine because he only has sisters, and she just shrugs it off. So should I have done the same? Am I the jerk? Mmm, see, for this one, I feel like your mama bear instincts maybe came on a little too strong. It is a natural thing to say. Everyone knows that boys can get a little crazy, and I'm sure your household can be quite loud and hectic sometimes. It's just casual conversation, a joke. I understand how you might feel a little bit slighted by it and how you could see it the way you did, but you gotta understand that's not how anyone means it. I'm sure that your boys are great boys, and you seem pretty perfectly happy with them. That's all that matters. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. Or if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot. Everything linked in the description.